Hello, uh, good afternoon. So again, I'm Dr. Osman Tasmin. Now I'm lecturing on uh, product architecture of the product development course. It is uh, chapter eight in your syllabus. Basically, in this chapter, uh, the textbook uh, presented uh, you with the uh, product of uh, basically uh, printer by the brand of uh, Hewlett Packard, right? So it is a printer of uh, brand Hewlett Packard is the case study in this chapter. So basically, uh, the printer uh, being discussed in this uh, chapter is on its uh, product architecture. So the product architecture, it means that uh, by having uh, architecture, they can increase the number of uh, models so that they can make a variety out of uh, the models, perhaps model uh, basic, uh, model intermediate, and model advanced. So basically, uh, even though they have uh, different forms of model number, but normally it still follow the same product basic architecture. So product architecture also is to uh, reduce the overall manufacturing cost because you're going to have uh, one platform, but out of that single platform, you can create uh, different, different types of model. So one of the key technology that is pre uh, presented in the Hewlett Packard printer is basically inkjet technology, which is it can print both color and black and white. So their printing quality is expected to produce a near photo quality print. And again, basically product architecture is very essential because it influences uh, the overall product cost and also how simple and how complicated uh, of the development process. Now, talking about product architecture, I think, of course, the best architecture is human architecture. Because in such a way, we have a head on the top, on top of the our head, we have uh, hair, and then we have uh, eyes, uh, nose, mouth, then we have the body, and we have the leg uh, on the bottom. So I would say, uh, that is the best architecture available. So, because uh, we think that uh, God has created human as the best form of uh, architecture, which is in the form of human architecture. So, why I say so? Because actually only God creates. The rest of us is just copy what uh, God has created. This is according to Michelangelo, right? So, uh, let's do some reflection on product architecture. For example, uh, Honda Asimo here. It is a human and robot. Uh, it is a robot uh, simulating human in which even the human creation like Asimo Honda, it also contemplate with the human creation, which is basically head on the top. Uh, you got the whole body here, uh, two uh, hands, left and right, and you Asimo also has two hands, and later it has two legs at the bottom. These are the uh, God's uh, architecture, and this is the uh, product of human architecture. So if we contemplate also on animals like birds flying, so in order for human to create aircraft uh, or aeroplane, like in this case, uh, uh, fighter jets. So human also uh, do some contemplation on God creation, uh, which is already flying, like this seagull flying. So it has wings, uh, it has uh, left, uh, right wing, it has rudder at the back. And by that, uh, human or uh, industrial uh, designer, design fighter, also somehow follow that uh, mimic uh, the God's creation of birds and fighter also has two wings, it has rudder and it has pilot uh, so that they can uh, make a good vision at the front. So I would say this is a comparison between uh, human architecture and uh, also uh, God uh, architecture. So back to the topic, uh, it is based on product architecture of Hewlett Packard uh, in terms of printer. Uh, home printing division is actually the printer that is uh, focusing on the uh, chapter in the textbook. It is for printer to be used for basically home usage or small office usage. 
basically in this uh, product architecture, HP give a priority on the ability of the, the architecture to give the variety of different different model. So HP or Hewlett Packard focusing on uh, product architecture that can uh, contribute to lowering the cost in terms of when it is being manufactured. So HP presented as far as uh, uh, home printer, uh, they focus on inkjet technology. So in which it is able to uh, print for both black and white and also uh, color printing. So on top of that, uh, the product architecture for this uh, home uh, printer is basically uh, it must be able to uh, influence the cost and also the subsequent pro uh, product that will process uh, in future for enhancement. So what is actually product architecture? Product architecture constitutes of uh, two main components. Uh, basically, the first uh, component is the functional uh, category. And the second uh, part is the physical category. So product uh, architecture has uh, the functions and product uh, architecture also contribute to the, the physical design of the product. So basically, the functional elements of a product are the uh, each uh, individual uh, operation that contributes to the overall performance, uh, which is the real function needed uh, by the product. For, a, for example, printer is supposed to be a printing. That is their function. Their physical, uh, their physical elements are basically those uh, uh, contributed by, the, for example, the chassis, for example, the printer head, uh, for example, the PCB, the printed uh, circuit uh, board, uh, for example, the power supply unit. So these are the physical elements in which all these components are basically to execute the function so that it can function properly, which is uh, to print uh, the output, all right? So printer, as far as uh, some of the function is uh, basically to supply uh, the uh, white paper or to supply the paper from the paper tray uh, towards uh, the, uh, I would say, printer head so that it can be printed on. Functional elements uh, also can be translated into its schem schematic diagram or the architecture of how the product uh, is being assembled together in which at a later stage I will discuss in more detail. So basically, product architecture is influencing how the product is to be progressively, uh, progressively developed uh, for its actual production. Product architecture basically uh, constitutes of uh, two types. Uh, the first type is uh, called modular architecture. Modular architecture means uh, it is uh, consisting of uh, several components or several blocks. They call in the uh, in the book uh, one block is a chunk, so all this chunk has their own elements. Or single chunk has few elements. So chunk or block of the product basically interact with other block so that they can perform the overall uh, function as per defined by the engineer or as per defined by the designer. So the interaction between the blocks uh, to other blocks are fundamental in order to execute its primary function. For example, supplying the power or supplying the uh, paper towards the uh, feeder roller and later uh, printed by the printer head. So this basically most uh, basic function uh, is uh, one function element is implemented by one physical chunk or one uh, few function actually executed by one physical chunk. So in other words, this is more simplified architecture in which one block or one chunk execute one function or a few functions. So if one chunk of the component of the whole uh, product parts uh, are being replaced or are being taken out, so actually it doesn't affect uh, the other function of the other chunk or the other block. So by means that 
uh, in the diagram, you can see in the exhibit 10-2 on the left part that is uh, considered uh, modular architecture. So the second type of uh, architecture is called integral. Integral, of course, the uh, derivative from integrated. So integral architecture means that a uh, few functional elements, um, few functions are actually implemented uh, by uh, using more than one chunk or one block. So few blocks are, are put together to execute a certain functional element of the product. So a single chunk implement many functional elements. So integral means that uh, one single chunk can execute uh, several function or few function. So because it is integrated uh, into the product, so we can say that the interaction between chunks or interaction between blocks actually cannot be seen from outside or externally. So integral architecture can uh, provide uh, better performance uh, basically because it is already assembled as an integrated nature. So in in that way, the function can perform more efficiently because it is like a built-in uh, single uh, product, but internally there are few parts that uh, have been integrated together. So the boundaries between Chang uh, basically difficult to be isolated difficult to identify because it is a single chunk uh, or single block and it produce a few functions. So as in the textbook, you can see at exhibit uh, 10.2 on the right side that is uh, considered uh, integral architecture. So let's uh, take a look on the actual product that implemented uh, modular product architecture. So as I, as I said earlier, modular product architecture means that uh, few chunks uh, execute uh, one or few function altogether. So interaction between chunks normally are well defined or can be seen from outside. The modular architecture has a better advantage in terms of physical assembly because it is uh, rather more simple and it can be reused uh, by different different model types uh, in the single platform. For example, model architecture is uh, quite well known like uh, Swiss Army Knife. Swiss Army Knife is uh, called modular, which is single uh, chunk produce a single function or few function. For example, in one single uh, Swiss Army Knife, it has many uh, tools. For example, uh, this is knife, and this uh, could be a plier, uh, this could be a scissor, and this uh, could be a, a bottle opener, and this could be a puncher. So each of this chunk, which is knife, uh, it has a function to cut. Like uh, this uh, plier, it has function to hold. And like this scissor, it has function to uh, uh, cut or to uh, uh, to cut things and knife here. So each of these actually has the, uh, their own function single-handedly. The other typical uh, model architecture we can see is like a Sony Walkman or Sony Player. So each of these uh, Walkman has its own modularized architecture. For example, headphone. For example, the cassette casing, for example, the PCB board or the cassette player, it has their own model, right? So if you open up like a Sony Walkman, it has this module casing on the top. Uh, so module casing on the bottom, uh, casing for cartridge insert, and it's a printed circuit board that control the logic operation of the cassette player and also the mechanical uh, buttons and uh, mechanical gears that are interacting together. So all these are considered modular, 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 one module and another module. So all modularized instead of integrated together. So in other words, uh, modular architecture give flexibility and give a more a visible interaction among the chunk or among the block that interact uh, with each other in order for the overall product to operate 
as per design. So this is another example is uh, from the book on the module architecture. For example, this is normally like a wagon. Uh, this wagon is attached a pair, uh, at the back of the truck or a car so that it can carry uh, more loads uh, for, for the user. So in this module architecture, we can see that the box, uh, the hitch, the fairing, the bed, the spring and the wheel. Basically, these are the box. Uh, this is the hitch. These are the fairing on the left and right. These are the bed, which is on the bottom part as the platform, springs, the absorb shock, and the wheel. So all these are modularized. And each of the uh, chunk of uh, block, uh, like box, box is basically to keep the goods that we are putting in uh, inside the uh, inside the wagon. So like the hitch, the hitch is fun function to uh, connect uh, at the back of the car or the truck and the spring, the spring to absorb uh, kind of a shock uh, when the uh, wagon and the car travel. So each of the uh, block or each of the chunk uh, function uh, on its own, right? So this is considered modular, modular architecture. We can, we can see another example like a, a trailer or wagon, which is uh, in the integral architecture, right? So this basically uh, all chunk are connected to each other. For example, the hitch, the hitch is joined to the uh, roofing or to the chassis. So it is kind of combined together, right? So in order uh, to provide the casing or the protection for the goods uh, when uh, it is being transported. Right. So it has the upper half, which is here, the upper half. It has the lower half, which is at the bottom one. So the function is actually to protect the cargo. And at the same time, it uh, connects uh, to the uh, vehicle, right? Because it is uh, combining both the hitch together with the upper, uh, upper half and lower half. So we have the wheels, basically, to transfer loads uh, to the road. Well, this is basically a separate architecture by itself, but the rest of the uh, architecture is actually integrated. So this is an example for integral architecture for a wagon or a trailer, which is normally attached at the back of a vehicle. Now, let's take a look on a, a closer example to us on modular and integral product architecture. Let's take a look on this motorcycle. Well, we could say this uh, Honda motorcycle which is normally can be seen around us so more uh, honda use quite uh, typical modular architecture in terms of uh, at the back here uh, it has the tail light and tail light is single it is uh, for brake light which is uh, on their own and it has a separate uh, i would say signal light right and signal light left it is a standalone uh, one uh, here one here, so that's that's why it is considered uh, modularized. If you compare to like this uh, Yamaha motorbike, uh, as far as the tail light and signal, it's all integrated uh, together. It is considered a single chunk, which is uh, tail light and also signal left and signal right. So single chunk produce uh, three function. For example, signaling left and signaling right, and also for the uh, braking for the red light in which at modular it is uh, in the separate three components. So this is a typical modular and integral architecture of our common product that normally we can see around us. So what is the advantage and disadvantage of modular? And what is advantage and disadvantages of being integral? I would say that uh, advantage for being modular that it has uh, um, uh, more priority for maintenance. For example, if the signal light got broken, you only replace uh, only on those signal light which is broken on the right. So if the tail light got broken, so you are only replacing the uh, red tail light. So these are the advantage. Of course, the disadvantages of modular is in fact that during the final product assembly, such product incur uh, higher cost or higher assembly time because you need to assemble three products altogether onto a motorcycle. 
instead of comparing to the integral architecture. So as far as integral architecture, on the maintenance part, right, so it is a quite costly, right? It's quite costly because any of the parts, uh, any of one of the three parts got broken, normally you have to replace for the whole set. For example, the whole set three in one. So the cost normally higher. But during the assembly of the product, if you want to assemble in the production line, so this kind of integral architecture incur lower cost and also faster assembly because uh, with few uh, number of nuts, this can be assembled uh, very fast. In terms of maintenance, perhaps in this part, uh, integral has a difficult challenge for maintenance. Of course, supplier like uh, to uh, supply integral part because they will keep a lower number of inventory as far as keeping this as a single uh, product in which for this kind of Honda motorcycle, you need to keep uh, three parts instead of Yamaha, you just keep one part for the same purpose or function. So let's take a look on different, different types of modularity. So this is all modular type, which is our first product architecture, modular. And modular, mo modular design has uh, three uh, types or category. One is a slot type. For example, slot model architecture, you can see in your car dashboard, uh, in which uh, normally in car dashboard, you can install, for example, a radio or a CD player into its slot. You just uh, unscrew uh, or latch it, and you can take out the old one, and then later you can uh, install the new one just by uh, just by slotting in into the slot and later get the wire connected and your new uh, DVD player or CD player can function already. So this is what they call uh, slot modular architecture. The second type of uh, modular uh, architecture is they call it bus modular architecture. Okay, bus, uh, bus means it is a single information highway inside the uh, computer or on the motherboard right so you can plug so many devices and all these devices will connect it to single information highway they call it they call it bus right so you can plug in mouse or you can plug in printer or you can uh, pl plug in your uh, uh, in, uh, phone for charging and you can plug in printer here for the serial port so all these uh, port are connected into single information highway so that it can be connected directly to the microprocessor on the motherboard. So this is considered bus model architecture. Normally, it works for electronic devices like computer. The third type of uh, model, uh, modular in, uh, architecture is sectional uh, modular architecture. Sectional means that one, one section of a complete product can be attached to the other section to complete uh, it as a whole. For example, this is a partition uh, office, uh, partition for one employee. Another partition is uh, for this employee. And uh, you can have four partition exactly about the same design and same size. You can attach it together to make the whole partition set for the employees that working in the office normally. So this is called sectional modular architecture. So what are the implication of architecture towards the final product design? So architecture, be it the modular or integral, it affects the uh, product change in order to change the product for a spare part, in order to change for product for damage, it affects whether it is simple or complicated in terms of changing. So this is the implication. Well, if it is uh, difficult to change, again, it will increase the maintenance cost. If it is fast and easy to change, perhaps it will lessen the cost for maintenance. Product architecture also influence in terms of how a variety of model can be produced uh, within the single architecture. So this will generate different, different model. So product variety can be made uh, easier, for example, for modular design, 
it has more variety in comparison to integral design. So as such, it influence product variety. So another implication for product component is uh, basically it also influence the standardization. So if product are integrated uh, architecture, normally it is uh, uh, easier to standardize because uh, product are using about the same platform. Architecture so influence product performance in terms of reliability because the more number of components you have, perhaps the more kind of uh, maintenance uh, you need to do because it is assembled differently. In terms of manufacturer manufacturability, I think that uh, pro modular architecture has a higher cost uh, to assemble in terms of manufacturing if you uh, compare to the integral architecture, which is faster assembly. And on the overall, either integral architecture or uh, modular architecture, it also influenced the uh, product development program for enhancement for future platform development. So it, in, uh, it will influence the future uh, model that is going to be developed if it is going for long uh, lifetime cycle. First, on the product change, so for product change, if it is integral or modular, it affects in terms of its upgrade, upgrade from model one to model two or model three, or perhaps like uh, phone, phone uh, model uh, three to model four, model five. So it upgrades, uh, it has uh, influence on its upgrade. So product change also influence on the add-on. Add-on means that it is a new feature being embedded into the new product. So product change also influence the adaptability of the product uh, by uh, through adaptation due to a requirement by environment perhaps, the wear and tear. So also influenced by product change, uh, flexibility in use and some part of the a reuse of a product for the next uh, new model. On product variety, product architecture also being influenced. For example, this like this swatch uh, watch model. So perhaps the engines of the timing uh, timer is the same, but since you have the casing and you have the uh, lay, uh, uh, you have the lace here different. So you can have many varieties out of a single uh engine uh, as far as the watch is concerned so this also influence product variety okay component standardization uh, means that uh, it is the use of the same component or chunk in multiple production so it influence the cost actually here for example uh, in 1985 when proton saga is being uh, was being developed by proton holdings so it uses many standardized components with the Mitsubishi 3D. So for example, the engine block is almost the same. And you could see some of the standardization in Mitsubishi model, Mitsubishi 3D in Japan are quite similar with uh, Proton Saga uh, back in Malaysia. Uh, like for example, the uh, windshield uh, and the main headlight are almost the same. So it product architecture influence the component standardization and on the overall, it influences the costing of the final product. Okay, product architecture also inf uh, influence product performance as far as uh, like this motorcycle. We would say that <laughs> most motorcycle implement this kind of approach in which it has, uh, it is uh, standalone chassis, like uh, most motorcycle has chassis uh, however, if you take a look on this motorcycle uh, BMW, uh, it has no chassis. Basically, the motorcycle with chassis, all component parts are attached or embedded into its chassis. For example, the petrol tank, the seat, all are being attached on the chassis. However, for this superbike uh, BMW, it is basically engine is attached to the tank and the tank is attaching to the seat and the 
uh, engine is attached uh, is attaching uh, to the sprocket and also later attaching the wheels so basically uh, product uh, performance also being influenced by its architecture normally this kind of assembly uh, require many processes and parts whereas here it is much more integrated and as such we can say that uh, this integrated product architecture influence better product performance so how to establish the architecture of a product four steps basically first you have to create the uh, schematic uh, or the uh, basic outlook of the product by the component and later you cluster co uh, the component uh, to be lump or group together as per their function and then you create the rough geometric layout uh, the assembly of the uh, final product and later we identify what are the interaction or the functional in terms of electrical or mechanical function of the chunk that uh, need to put together let's take a look on this schematic diagram basically first you create a schematic block so these are the schematic block for chassis that is enclosed printer, the body, the chassis that provide the uh, bottom structural part. This is another, I would say, uh, schem uh, another cluster, which is uh, store the paper output. And this is the store paper blank input. And this is also another block, the print cartridge, the position of the cartridge, which is the this cluster. Another cluster is the logic control, for example, the to accept user input and control printer in terms of uh, photocopying or printing or scanning. So these are the logic, I would say, uh, cluster, including the LCD display. And this part is basically the power supply part. And this is basically the communication control between the host and also commanding printer so after you have put all the schematic block component and you cluster them together and you put the layout together which is uh, the body chassis uh, put next to the printing mechanism and then this is the logic and later you decide uh, the first step is to decide the interaction between all the cluster the power supply cluster uh, the logic cluster you put the dash uh, line in terms of connection that means that this is electrical uh, electrical signal flow whereas the black line is considered uh, main power supply right so this is a uh, flow of material for example paper getting in get picked up and then get printed and then after the paper got printed it will uh, put it uh, outside into the uh, store tray which is the printer after printing the paper so on the overall of this uh, the schematic which is each block and then you cluster them together you put in such a way of layout that they can interact each other so these are the whole uh, process flow for establishing the architecture which is create the schematic of the product cluster the element of the schematic together create a rough gen uh, geometric layout and identify the fundamental and the interaction between the cluster. So that is how Hewlett Packard Deskjet Printer schematic diagram is being constructed in order to uh, execute it, uh, the modular and the integral architecture. And that constitute of the product architecture of the chapter for this product uh, development course of uh, chapter number eight on product architecture so this is how it looks when the uh, schematic diagram cluster and interaction put together in the single product in the form of hewlett packard dash printer it is a home uh, printer type which is basically the uh, uh, lowest cost available for hewlett packard uh, printer by that, I conclude this chapter on product architecture, chapter number eight. Thank you for your attention.